Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle, a Sangaku problem. Two semicircles and a circle with radius r are inscribed in a unit square as shown on the left, find r, which is the radius of the shaded circle. At this point, you may just want to pause the video and try the problem first. Okay, let's get started. So here's my strategy. First of all, I know that this is a unit square, so the side length is going to be 1. That means that these are going to be one half. So I know that. I do not know the radius of the smaller semicircle. Let's call that x. And I'm going to start by finding it first. Okay. So let me go ahead and make some connections here. Let me go ahead and connect these two. And when I make that connection, it makes sense because this is also one half. And this is x. And now this is a right triangle. Let's go ahead and find x. Okay. How do I find this length? Well, the whole thing is 1, so it's going to be 1 minus x. And let's go ahead and write down our equation. We get 1 half squared plus 1 minus x quantity squared is equal to 1 half plus x quantity squared. Let's go ahead and expand this. 1 fourth plus 1 minus 2x plus x squared is equal to 1 fourth plus x plus x squared. This is nice because 1 fourth plus x squared cancels out and we end up with a very simple equation. If you put all the x's on the same side, you get 3x equals 1 and x equals 1 third. Awesome. So now we know that the radius of the smaller semicircle is 1 third. Let's go ahead and find the radius of the circle. Okay, so for that one, I'm going to make more connections. So let me go ahead and make more connections here. I'm going to go ahead and connect these two centers first. That's going to help me a lot, obviously, right? Well, sometimes the pen is acting up. I don't know why. Okay, so that is one connection. And then let's go ahead and connect these. Obviously, that's also going to help us, right? Now, to put it in a frame, We'll be better off if we do that because then we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So that's pretty much the strategy that I'm going to use. So let's drop a perpendicular here. And then another one here. And then now we can talk about Pythagorean theorem. Okay? Awesome. So this is a right triangle and that is a right triangle. So let's designate some length. For example, Let's call this one. I can actually expand this one too, so to make it a better picture, to get a better idea here. Okay, here we go. So, this one here is going to be, the radius is going to be R. Awesome. And then let's call this H, this height here. Okay. That's kind of like the height of one of the triangles. Okay. How does that help us now? Well, we do know that this is R, right? This part is going to be R. And this whole thing was X, remember? So that means that it's this piece is going to be, this piece is going to be X minus R. Let me go ahead and write that down. But we know that X is one third actually, right? So it's going to be one third minus R. Okay. So now I do have a right triangle here that I can use. Whose side lengths are one third minus R, H. And what about the hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse is going to be one third plus r. There you go. So that's going to be my first equation. Let's go ahead and write that. Okay. So I have one third minus r squared. That's one of the legs, right? The other leg, which is the height, is h. So I'm going to write h squared. And the hypotenuse, as you see here, is going to be one third plus r. So it's going to be one third plus r. And what we can do here is we can actually use our identity. Remember, I was always telling you a plus b squared minus a minus b squared is 4ab. So if you use that, this is going to equal 4 thirds r. Okay, that's kind of like a nice shortcut that I like to use. So this gives me a relationship between h and r. I just need another one. Okay, let's go ahead and find it. And that's going to come from this triangle. Make sense? Okay. Now, so basically, we built a rectangle here by using the connections, and that's what we're using. So, how do I use this one? 
Now, how do you find this length? That might be a little tricky. Well, that's not too hard because we know that the base of this square is 1, so it's going to be 1 minus r. What about this little height here? Well, this is the center, right? And we know that this length here, this length here, is going to be the difference between, so this is h, this is 1 minus h, right? Make sense? So this is also going to be 1 minus h, this part. So we're basically subtracting that from the 1 half. So this is going to be, and I know it's a little tricky here, it's going to be 1 half minus 1 minus h. 1 half minus 1 minus h. Okay, sorry, I have a little room there. But I'm going to copy that down, down here. Okay, so that's my second triangle. What are the lengths? Well, the height is 1 half minus 1 minus h, which is right here. And then the base is 1 minus r. And what about the hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse is 1 half plus r. So let's go ahead and put that into an equation, okay? One more time. And actually, I think it will be helpful if I go ahead and simplify this expression here. What is 1 half minus 1 minus h, right? I just found that here, this is 1 minus h, and I subtracted from 1 half to find a little height. But if you go ahead and expand this, actually, you're going to get h minus 1 half, which is much better, right? Which is much better. Okay, so that's h minus 1 half, and the base is 1 minus r, so it's going to look like this then. h minus 1 half squared plus 1 minus r squared, and that's going to equal what? 1 half plus r squared. So that's going to be my second equation. The reason why I write that is while I have all these variables and the picture, I copied it, so then I'm going to copy it down here again. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that right now. So my, my second equation is this one, h minus 1 half, I guess I got to move it up a little bit, squared, plus 1 minus r squared is equal to 1 half plus r squared. Awesome. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to use these two equations. Now I have them, right? You can see both of them clearly. And what I'm going to do is I'll just use this system of equations, right? Okay, let's go ahead and expand the second one. It looks complicated, but it's going to simplify a great deal. h squared minus h plus 1 fourth. Great, plus 1 minus 2r plus r squared is equal to 1 fourth plus r plus r squared. Again, a lot of terms cancel out, which is nice. r squared cancels out, 1 fourth cancels out. Nice. Now, what do we get from here? We get actually, we can get r by itself. Oh, that's cool because I can do the same thing here and then I can solve it simultaneously. Let's go ahead and do that. So this gives me h squared minus h plus 1 is equal to 3r because I added 2r to both sides and divide by 3 you'll get r equals h squared minus h plus 1 all over 3. So this is my r and from this equation I can actually get the r by itself and that's going to give me r equals 3h squared over 4. Now one problem with this approach is we have to solve for h and then plug it in to find r. But that's no big deal. I mean, come on, this equation is simple. You can just do it, right? So no big deal. Because if you try to write everything in terms of r, you're going to run into some difficulties because here you have a quadratic. h is quadratic, so you have to solve the quadratic to find h in terms of r. So that might be a little tricky. You see what I'm saying? Or you could do the following. You can square root both sides here to get h is equal to square root of 4 thirds r and then plug it in here and go that way too but i'm just gonna follow this way okay so what i'm gonna do now is set those two equal to each other let's do that r equals r obviously so this equals that so this is one of my equations for r and this is my other equation for r so i'm setting the, setting them equal Go ahead and cross multiply 4h squared minus 4h plus 4 is equal to 9h squared. If I put everything on the same side and keep the h squared positive, everybody will be happy. 5h squared plus 4h minus 4 is equal to 0. And let's not forget that r is equal to 
3h squared over 4. So that's going to be my key for finding r once I find h. Okay, and obviously let's take a look at the value of h, like what kind of h value we're looking at. Judging by the picture, I would say h is greater than 1 half, but slightly greater than 1 half. So I'm expecting something a little over 0 0.5. So that would help us in figuring out which solution we're going to take. Obviously, one of the solutions is negative, so we're not going to take that. We have to go with the positive. Let's go ahead and do that. Negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4, but that's going to bring a positive 4, 5, 4. So we're going to solve this quadratic here, divided by 2a, which is 10. Let's go ahead and simplify it. 16 plus 4 times 4 times 5 is 80. That Their sum is going to be 90, so we're dealing with the square root of 96. Okay. And then the square root of 96 can be written as square root of 16 times 6, which is 4 root 6. So this is going to equal negative 4 plus 4 root 6. Divide by 10. If you divide everything by 2, then h will be... 2 root 6 minus 2 over 5. Awesome. So I got h. Now I got to find r, but r is equal to this, 3h squared over 4. So let's go ahead and plug it in to find the radius. I'm going to multiply 3 fourths by the square of this number. Let's go ahead and square this number. Okay. And then multiply by 3 fourths and we'll get the answer. Let's go ahead and do that. How do you square a fraction? You fra uh, square the numerator. That's going to be a minus b, so square that, 24 minus 8 root 6, 2ab, right? Plus 2 squared, which is 4, all over 25. Let's go ahead and simplify this. I think 4 will be a common factor, so we can just go ahead and write it as 3 times 28 minus 8 root 6, divided by 4 times 25, or you can just go ahead and multiply out and then simplify r is going to equal 3 times 4 times, now if you divide by 4, that's going to be 7 minus 2 root 6 over 4 times 100, and that's going to be 25, right? If you simplify, that's going to be 25. And if I write the r in the simplest form, who knows what the form is, right? 21 minus 6 root 6 over 25, okay? That's going to be my answer for the radius of the circle. 21 minus 6 root 6 all over 25. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, write something about this problem. And share if you have any insights or ideas. Let me know. And see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.